That's the explanation. Now let's talk about the exam technique, okay? So this is great. Now let's talk about the exam technique. Okay, so first of all, uh, I'm gonna say two for one is <laughs> the first exam technique. <laughs> and two for one means that you might have one indicator, but you might have more than one risk. So what I often find is in exams, students go, okay, Bob is stupid. It's gonna impact uh, the accuracy of sale. Okay, I'm done, move on. No, 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 be very careful. Bob is stupid. Um, it's gonna impact the accuracy of sales. It's also going to impact the completeness of sales. And it's going to impact the, uh, the accuracy of cost of sales, right? So in terms of gathering marks, don't go one risk equals one impact. Make sure that you break it down and go, could this possibly impact more than one assertion in the same account balance? Or is this a possibility that this is going to impact more than one account balance? Okay, so think about whether it's account balance or balances and whether or not there's assertions or one assertion. Okay, so that's exam technique. Be very careful about that. Okay, the other thing that we get wrong is the communication. Okay, and this is where most of the marks come from. So I generally find, you know, in questions, students will confuse uh, assertion and overall a little bit, but generally not to an extent that they will lose, you know, that they'll fail. Okay, so there's generally a little bit of confusion, but it's not, you know, it's not bad enough that you're going to fail the question because of that. But the communication, you could have the right, uh, you know, the right risks the right indicator, the right thinking, the right separation. But if you put it across wrong, it gets zero. That's why communication is so important because you stuff it up once and you lose every single mark. Okay, so that, this is the most important thing, right? Now, the communication, you always have to tell me three things. You've got to tell me three things. If you do not include all these three things in your communication of risk, whether at financial statement level or at assertion level, both of them, same thing. You don't tell me all three, you get zero. Very, very important. Item number one, what is the indicator? Okay, you've got to tell me the indicator. So the indicator is, what's the thing? What's the issue? And this is from the case study, right? So this is the case study says, whatever. Uh, you know, this is Bob. Bob is stupid. That's my indicator. Because in the case study, they would have had to say, uh, you know, they've employed Bob in the sales department and Bob is really stupid. They would have had to tell you that. So this is the indicator. You've got to start off with the indicator, which is Bob is stupid. That's the indicator. You've got to tell me what it is that raised the alarm for you. So in some cases, students will go, I'm worried about fraud. Uh, management's going to overstate the profits. And I'm going, where did you get that from? What made you worry about that? Like, what made you raise the risk? Because if I can't connect that to a specific thing, then like, I don't know, you could just raise every risk on earth. This is wrong, and that's wrong, and that could be wrong, and that could be wrong. I need you to start off by saying, you see this little piece of information over here? That makes me worry. Okay, that thing there, I'm worried about that. That makes me worry. So you've got to have the indicator. Item number two, you've got to have the impact. What is the impact? Okay, what's the impact of this thing? Like, what is this gonna do? Okay, and this is now, you know, if we're dealing with account balance level risk, for example, this is now, tell me what account balance is impacted and tell me what assertion or assertions is impacted. Okay, what could possibly go wrong? And if it's at, a, you know, if it's an overall financial statement level, tell me what could go wrong. Are we talking about overstating profits, understating profits, going concern? Uh, fraud overall, general error, et cetera, et cetera. What is the impact? What, you know, what does this mean? 
And then you've got to tell me why. And this is what students don't do. This is the biggest thing that we leave out, okay? So 90% of students will tell me, I read this in a case study, great, that's your indicator. Uh, I'm worried about the overstatement of profits, great, that's your impact, but you're not telling me why. Why are you worried? Like, why? If you don't connect these two, then I don't understand what your understanding is. Like, I don't understand where you get this crap from, right? So you could come up with something and I'm going like, I, like, I don't make the connection. So you could go, I don't know, you could go, for example, and say, uh, the tea girl cleans up or, or the cleaning lady, she cleans the office at night. Um, you know, she cleans the office at night and she's on her own. And therefore, I'm worried about the completeness of sales. Anyone else would be looking at this going, what the hell is your connection between the cleaning lady working late at night and the completeness of sales? What the hell? Okay. If you say, let me tell you why. Because she's in the office on her own and one of the things she does is she cleans up the pieces of paper on everybody's desk and she shreds it. So therefore, I'm worried that there's sales invoices that haven't been captured yet and they've been shredded. And when you come back in for work the next day, the sales invoices don't exist anymore and so they were never recorded. Now I'm going, oh yeah, good point. <laughs> good point. Yeah, okay, I never thought of that. If you don't connect the indicator with the impact, then I'm left with like, you're weird. Like, where would you get that from? Okay. I had, I had a client once, <laughs> fairly funny and not so funny at the time. You can imagine what this actually looked like on the audit file. I had a client once where I was like, they were, they were a subsidiary of a listed company. So, you know, compliance with efforts was really, really important. And I came back and I said to my audit manager, I'm worried, like, and the financial manager, she's like, yeah, that's fine. You definitely comply with Ephraim. Uh, you know, that's great, everything. And the order manager was like, oh, that's good to hear. Da, 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 that's fine. And I went back to the order manager and I said, like, I don't think, I don't think that they comply with Ephraim. Like, I'd be very worried about their Ephraim compliance. And he was like, yeah, what's, what's your problem? And I said, this is going to sound really, really weird. But if you go into her office and you look at her files on her, her stuff, she's got like an Ephraim compliance file. Right, so that, that looks good, except for the slight problem that she writes, um, she writes Ephraim like that. Sort of the say it like, you know, spell it like you say it. she was Afrikaans. So when she spoke about Ephraim, it was Ephraim. And this is how she put it on the file. And I'm like, if you don't know what Ephraim actually is, if you don't even know what the acronym is, then I have a hard time believing that you actually know what you're doing. Like how deep could you possibly have gone into your financial reporting standards if you think there's an A in there? Surprise, surprise, I was right, okay? So if I'd have just put on there, check doesn't know, yeah, financial manager doesn't know how to spell Ephraim, it would have been like completely bizarre, but making the connection, okay. This is your why. Absolutely, utterly, completely, entirely crucial. Now, the nice thing about this is that when you're studying and you're doing your questions, you can look at this and go, have I said three things? Have I covered three things? So when you're studying, I want you to continually ask yourself, have I covered three things? Have I covered three things? Is there an indicator? Where in the case study is this said? If the examiner looks at that, will he be able to see I got it from this sentence? I got it from this information. Number two, what's the impact? If it's account balance level, I've got to have an account and I've got to have an assertion or more than one account or more than one assertion. That's my impact. If it's at financial statement level, I've got to indicate what the picture is going to be messed up by. You know, there's going to be overstatements of profits, overstatements of assets, understatements of liabilities, understatement um, of, of profit, for example, based on what, why, why am I worried about this? Because management has an incentive to get the loan. Management has an incentive to get bonuses. Management has been known in the past to do dodgy stuff. And therefore, I'm worried that they're going to do dodgy stuff again. 
Okay. Bob is stupid. If he doesn't know how to switch a calculator on, he's definitely going to make errors when he adds up the invoices. And therefore, I'm worried about the accuracy of sales. Okay. So there's got to be three things. Indicator, impact, why. Unfortunately, the only way to completely fix this is to practice it. Okay. Now, the beautiful thing here is that most students go from getting two, <laughs> like two out of 10 for risk questions to getting eight out of 10 for risk questions when they fix this. Because most of the risks they have are right. The only problem is they're not telling me properly. Okay. So what I've done um, is I've given you, and this is, this is in the course, you can download it later. What I've given you is like a little table. Um, and this comes from one of Unisa's tut letters now in the past, whatever the case is. And UNISA talks about it, or most of universities talk about it as you've got to give the indicator and the description, okay? I have separated that so that you can actually kind of assess it for yourself um, a little bit easier. And I've kind of highlighted in there, your, your description contains your impact and your why. And I've kind of indicated the why in orange. So the first one, for example, the financial statements may be materially misstated as the entity might not comply properly with the following laws resulting in, there's your impact, resulting in material misstatements of unrecorded liabilities and expenses. Okay. So why are you worried? Why are you concerned? What was it about this thing that raised that? And I've got, um, I've got, you know, obviously, obviously is not a comprehensive list, but it kind of gives you an indication, uh, you know, kind of gives you a bit of an indication going forward of like what you need to do. Most of this, all of this, by the way, yeah. is at financial statement level risk. Um, it gives you a bit of an indication of like what it is that you need to work on. What is it that you need to cover? So in terms of your, your risks, um, and I think I put another set of notes in there. Um, in, 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 in the course that I haven't put on here, uh, which is kind of giving you a little bit more of steps in terms of the communication of risks. Okay, so that is your risk assessment. Um, the really great thing about risks is that if you get, as I said, right up front, did I? No, I didn't. Wait. Mm. If you get this right, okay, it's a lot easier to get your plan right and it's a lot easier to get your evidence right because once you know and once you can identify that you know bob is going to impact the accuracy of sales when i say to you what's your response to that it's a lot easier to say i need to recalculate sales Okay. If you get the response wrong, if you're kind of just saying, yeah, Bob's stupid, what's your response to that? Kill Bob. I don't know. <laughs> Tell management to fire Bob. I don't, I don't know. What's my impact? If you can identify, isolate, be specific about the, the, the risks themselves and the impact that they have, it's a lot easier to say, well, if the accuracy of sales is at risk, then my response would be to recalculate this, or to recalculate sales. So, and we're, we're, again, we're going to get into plan and response just now, but that is your risk of material mistake. 